Yo, what's good? It's your boy Dixon from Twitter Designs. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to streetwear design the easy way by only using the threshold effect on Photoshop. Once you've learned this technique, you should be able to create design styles like these because they are essentially done the same way. Now, without further ado, let's go. Right guys, so the asset we're working with today is this angel stock photo I got from DeviantArt. Download links below if you want to follow along. Um, first off, click on this slot icon here to unlock the layer. After that, hit Command J to copy it. This is just a precaution in case I mess up. Um, after that, I'm going to remove the background. If you have the latest Photoshop, then just go to this quick action panel here and then click remove background. And then you should have something like this. Um, Let's zoom in a little bit to see if it looks good. Um, as you can see, it isn't perfectly cropped, so let's clean up a little bit. Um, we're gonna use the magic wand tool and then select the outline of the angel. Um, after that, we're gonna use the brush tool to paint on the mask layer to get rid of the unwanted sections. Of course, guys, this is just an example for this tutorial. You can always use your own stock photo if you want. Theoretically, it still works the same. Moving on, we're going to go to the adjustment layer button here and then apply a solid color. Um, we're going to set the color in black, so just drag it all the way to this corner here. And then make sure that it's placed below the statue layer. Okay, after that, we're going to start adding a threshold effect, which is, again, go to the same adjustment layer button and then select threshold. Um, place the layer above the statue layer and then it should have something like this. Now you can drag the cursor left and right and see what it does to the statue. Uh, it basically turns your photo to this dual tone effect in black and white and they are solid so no shading or you know any sort of gradient. Um, this setting is best if you are screen printing. I'll explain why in a sec if you don't know yet. Uh, for now let's find the mid tone of the statue. Let's see. Um, um, I feel like 80 would be a good middle ground so we're gonna go with that. Now this setting doesn't apply to all photos because it shifts depending on the photo you work with, you know, so you gotta practice and wing it sometimes. Now while pressing on the shift key on your keyboard, select all three of these layers and then hit option command E to merge them. After that, turn off the rest of the layers and then go to select and then color range and then select the white part of the statue and then make sure the fuzziness is 60 and then click OK. After that, we're gonna apply a mask layer. So go to this button here, and then there you go. Now we have the white part of the statue completely separated from the background. And um, we can start applying color to it. But before that, let's go and turn the layers back on. Now we're gonna find the highlight part of the statue. So setting the value higher will cause um, the white area to become smaller, which is exactly what we want. Um, I feel like you know what let's go with 120 I think this is good enough now we're gonna repeat the same process again select all three of these layers option command E to merge and then select color range select the white part of the area and then apply the mass layer we're gonna right click on the mass layer and then apply them um, then let's rename these layers correctly so we don't get them mixed up but remember to always put the highlight layer above the midtone layer now we can start adding colors so just go to the effects button here and then go to color overlay and then apply the color of your choice now i've pre-selected the colors myself i'll put the hex code on the screen if you guys want to follow along basically i'll put the purple on the midtone layer and then the orange on the highlight layer to kind of create that contrast and then there you have it. This is exactly the technique that I use to create most of my shirt designs because, you know, it is suitable for shirt designing, especially when you're screen printing because the colors are solid and they are easily separable. And that's exactly how the print shops print them. If you've seen the designs from my previous video, which I'll link here, um, it is exactly the same technique. It may look different to you because there's a lot more colors involved. You know, I've combined a lot of stock photos to create this scenery as opposed to like the statue that we did just now, which was just one element. But yeah, you can see the gazebo here that I've added on top of the mountain and then the stars in the background. And then there's this mist, this purple mist. Um, you know, it was all done the same way using the same technique. Perfect. Perfect. 
Now I'm gonna show you guys the typical way to create a shirt design. So first off, create a new document and then go to this print tab here and then select A3. 300 for the resolution. Color mode should be CMYK, but for now, I'm just gonna set in RGB because I like working in that mode. We can convert to it afterwards. And then set the background black and click OK. After that, drag the angel group layer from the previous document and then drop it in the new working file. Once you've done that, I'm going to apply a mask layer to the group. And then using the brush tool to brush out the lower section of the statue because I only want to work with the wings only. Now we're adding text. The font I'm using is called Chapaza or however you want to pronounce that. And I'm going to set the vertical scale to 180% because I like that tall and stretch look. Um, this is probably not the best way to do this. I mean, I should have used a tall serif font instead. But, you know, this is just a rough example. Let's resize the command T to select, holding the shift key and then drag it down like this. Now, command J to copy the text and then drag this one down below and then changing it to angels. So um, let's change the text color to that shade of purple. After that, I'm going to group the text layer and then place it below the statue because I want that statue's details to pop more. It also gives out this cool double exposure vibe, which is pretty sick. Next step is adding a slogan or something like a catchphrase of the brand. This is how they do it generally. But yeah, for this though, you always want to use a different font. So something basic like a sans serif font to kind of contrast the bigger serif font. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go with Integral. By the way, this is not Palm Angel's official slogan. I just completely, I mean, randomly come up with this. I think it was by Mother Teresa. Uh, so yeah, I'm changing the text color to orange because it kind of works as an accent color too. You know what? Let's separate this sentence in two lines for that cleaner look. Final step is adding like a globe element to the design. Again, this is a really typical approach to streetwear design. You've probably seen like a million times now. Um, anyway, using the ellipse tool, you set the fill to none and then the stroke to 10. Make sure it's in the purple color. Now you drag it down like this while holding the shift key. Next, you command J to copy and then command T to select. Now you hold the shift and option key at the same time, but you drag the sides of the circle like this. I'm actually just eyeballing it, but I think that's good. Now repeat the process, command J, command T, and then hold shift and option and then drag the sides. But this time you drag it even wider. Now for the last one, same process, but you drag it inwards instead. Now copy the wider shape and then drag it down like this. And then repeat the process, but this time you drag this one up. Select both of those layers, right click and then merge them. Now you hold the command key and then click on the wider shapes thumbnail like this. Now let's recenter them. Just go to this controls panel here and then click on these. After that, you can apply a mass layer. Final step is adding a straight line for the middle axis. Make sure its width is the same as the rest of the lines. Again, apply a mass layer and we are done. Hope you learned something from this video. Subscribe now so you don't miss out on free stuff that I give out every single week. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.